He was one of us, a brother amongst us in our Empyrean domain. The depth of evil lurking inside of him was unknown. But then again, there was evil lurking inside many of us that no one thought existed. We never thought his actions would go so far as to rebel against us. We never thought he was persuasive enough to turn so many to his side. We were wrong. everybody so we're here to uh keep the discussion going about my book the genesis of seven and um tonight we'll be getting more in depth about some of the characters in the story um but before i start uh my uncle's birthday is tonight so i just wanted to wish him a happy birthday uh i don't know if he's on yet but he might be on and um, i hope he's having a great day and a great night and um just wanted to give him a shout out before we get into talking about my book. Um, so yeah, today marks a month since my book released on July 7th. And um, it's been great so far. We've had people worldwide interested in it and we've sold probably nearly almost 250 copies so far. So it's been going really well. And um, so tonight though, I wanna make this chat more about um, getting to know some of um, the characters in my book. And I thought the best way to start off would be to get into um, pronouncing some of the names because I know if you've started reading um, or if you haven't started reading that some of the character names are um, a little odd. So I figured I'd jump into that and then um, I'd get more into getting to know the narrators because there are four characters um, that have point of view chapters in the book. And then we'll get to any questions you have. And um, we are going to be doing uh, a live giveaway again tonight. So we'll get that uh, link posted in the chat or the comments. Um, and uh, I think that will start posting. Um, and we will also, yeah, there's the link now. We will also, um, yeah, so at the end, I'll also be taking, um, any questions you have. So if you want to, if you have questions now, you could start posting them in the comments. Um, if you don't have questions and want to wait till later to think of some while I start talking, then you could post them whenever you'd like. So, um, I wanted to start off by going through pronouncing some of the character names. And so I figured I'd start with um, the angels in heaven. Um, so the main angels throughout the whole book are uh, the seven listed here. So we have Gabriel, Michael, Raphael, Uriel, Chamuel, Jophiel, and Zachiel. And um, these are the seven archangels that uh are actually on earth and um they're also in heaven but they come to earth and they're pretty much the seven angels that the book revolves around and why i named the genesis the seven the, that's the seven um so then we also have the characters some more angels that are in heaven so some major characters in heaven so we have um so samael is actually satan's angel name so this is the name he had when he was uh, still in heaven and he hadn't fallen yet. Um, Seraphiel is uh, actually a female angel and she is very high ranking and uh, she has a really important role in heaven and um, she's featured uh, in the book. And then we have Metatron, Raziel, Sandalfin, Zafkiel, that one the T is silent so just kind of read the from the Zeon, so it's Zafkiel, and then Ariel. And these are also major characters um, that are featured in heaven. And um, I don't wanna give too much away and I don't wanna tell you too much about them, but the 
the last five listed on this list here are actually on um, a council in heaven. So that's a little bit of a sneak peek of what's to come in the book. Um, and then some other minor characters we have uh, that are also in heaven are Araziel, Cassiel, Haniel, and Griel. So just so you kind of get a sense of um, how to say their names, because they're definitely spelled oddly and not normal names. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention, I'm going to put um, some of these slides back up. So the seven archangels, there are all male angels. And then, so the, some of the major characters here, so Samael is male, um, Seraphiel is female, Metatron, Raziel, Sandalfin are all male angels, and then Zaphkiel and Ariel are female angels. Um, and then here, Araziel and Cassiel are male angels, and Haniel and Griel are female angels. And then um, I also want to get into pronouncing some of the angel names in hell because they're also definitely not normal names. So some we have here, so we have Satan, Lucifer, Leviathan, Beelzebub, Mammon, Asmodeus, Belphegor, and then there's Lilith. And um, so Lilith I threw on here because she's featured most predominantly in hell, even though she's not necessarily uh, an angel. But, um, all of these angels here are male other than Lilith. And then some secondary characters that we have featured in Hell. Um, so we have Astrid and Tabitha. They are female and they are actually spirits that reside in Hell. Then we have um, Cerberus, which is actually a Cerberus, which is actually from the myths. He's the three-headed hellhound that resides in Hell. And then we have um, Abadonna. She's a female fallen angel. Um, Murmur, Mul Mulciber, Balbareth, they're all male fallen angels. And then Haborum is also a female fallen angel. And um, essentially, all these characters, so they reside in hell. And I figured I just, um, I wanted to feature them because they all kind of do um, some jobs that Satan gives them throughout the book and the chapters. So they, uh, they're they a little important and they're featured a lot. So, and I also wanted everybody to get more comfortable with the names because like I said, it it they are not normal. <clears throat> so um, getting back to the seven main archangels, um, one thing that uh, I don't think is entirely apparent when you, um, if you haven't read yet, is that so the angels, these seven archangels do come to earth. And I've said before that they've assimilated into society. And um, so that means a lot of different things. So that means, you know, they are taking on jobs um, within human society. And they also have um, kind of like homes within human society. But the interesting thing um, and the other part I haven't touched on yet is that what I mean by assimilating into society, I also mean that they take on the nationalities, characteristics, and cultures of the locations that they're located in. So they are spread throughout the whole world and they reflect that diversity in who they are. Um, so this is a good time. Um, I will just remind everybody one more time that um, if you have questions, you can post them in the comments because we'll get to those at the end. And then um, we also are doing the giveaway. So if you want to uh, get the giveaway, the giveaway I didn't mention. So the giveaway will be a paperback copy, a signed paperback copy of the book. And it will also feature some of the merchandise that I've shown before. So like the tote bag. Um, the uh, the all the pins and the in the little feather pouch with the pen, and then you'll also get the little passport with the sticker sheet. So the the link is still in the comments, um, and I think it's pretty far at the top. So you should still be able to find it, and we just posted it um, again. So moving on, um, I wanted to just lets you get to know a little bit more about the four main narrators in the book. So let me get to this page. 
Okay, so the four main narrators in the book are Jordan, Gabriel, Michael, and Satan. And when I say narrators, essentially what I mean is that they each have point of view chapters. So they have chapters told from their point of view that kind of progresses the story along, but also intertwines together. Um, so the first character that I figured I'd talk a little more about is Jordan. He's the uh, main character pretty much, and he's um, the 18 year old human boy that uh, kind of gets mixed up in all this angelical adventure. And um, I knew Jordan was kind of the last piece of the puzzle for me. I had all the angels figured out and he randomly came to mind one day because I knew I needed to kind of bring this story all together on earth. And I didn't know quite how I was going to do that. And Jordan happened to be the, the, solution really and um with jordan though i knew i wanted him to be 18 years old because one being 18 years old he's at a big transition in his life so he has um he's just graduated high school and he has the decision to go to college or not to go to college and i knew before i even wrote the book all the events that were going to happen not just in the first book but throughout the entire series so I knew it was gonna be pretty difficult for him to be younger than 18 because he'd have to be juggling somehow a worldwide angelic have to save the world adventure with school um, and kind of required school because it's high school. So that's why I wanted him to be 18. I wanted him to be done with high school and to be moving on into adulthood. And so, that was what made me decide to make him that age. And then Jordan, ultimately, he does want to go to college, but he does have this mysterious call to help others. And because of that, he puts off college. Um, and it happens to be a good thing for this because uh, then he does get mixed up with the angels and goes on this crazy adventure. So um, I didn't want to have to kind of have this conflicting narrative with him. I didn't want him to have to make some ultimatum between going with the angels or having to stay back and deal with kind of just real world reality. So that was my choice in kind of making him the age he was. Um, but like I touched on, he does, he is motivated by helping others. And um, that makes him very selfless, which is probably his biggest strength. He, he cares so much about others that he doesn't worry about himself. And in the same sense, it's also his greatest weakness because even though, you know, he wants to help others, he doesn't care about himself. And sometimes he uh, gets in, I would say, some predicaments where um, he's worried about the angel so much that he doesn't think about himself and then he winds up getting hurt. <laughs> so um, in a way, it's his greatest strength and it's also his greatest weakness. But he's a really um, kind, loyal and adventurous kid. I mean, he is pretty, I would say, open minded to the whole angelic situation. Um, he's a little I would say at first he's a little it takes him a little while to come around, but not too long. I would say it's about maybe a chapter if not maybe a chapter and a half, but um, he's really open-minded to the whole situation and, and takes it as well as anybody could when they are just thrown into this situation and um, realize that angels are here among us on earth. Um, so moving into another point of view character, I'm gonna talk now about Gabriel. So Gabriel is one of the seven archangels and he's on earth and um, Gabriel is actually the first archangel that Jordan meets. Um, and all along with Gabriel, he was kind of the first angel that started it all for me The in terms of the story and wanting to write the story. And his voice was the first that came to me. Um, and so in my head, Gabriel was always the one who was kind of very, very serious and, and formal um, and in heaven and also on earth. Um, and he's the one who his core motivation is all about, you know, duty. He has a duty. Um, he had a duty in heaven that he carried out and fulfilled. And that duty then was brought down with him to earth. He was, you know, told to come to earth to fulfill a purpose. And that hasn't, 
he hasn't forgotten that purpose. Um, and he's one of the, the, I would say the only angels on earth that definitely, um, can't forget the past. He, he, the events that happen in heaven kind of follow him, um, to earth and his everywhere he goes really. Um, and so he has a great sense of acting, um, on responsibility. So he feels very responsible about everything that happens. Um, and in a way he's also very empathic. So he feels everything. Um, and I would say because of that, it all, he kind of takes, I don't want to say he takes things personally, but it is personal for him because he just feels like he has to uphold the mission that he was given and really created for. And so throughout the whole book, he, that's the kind of the driving force for him. And Jordan just happens to kind of go along and take this journey with Gabriel, but it's ultimately Gabriel that knows he, he has to finish what he was sent here to do. Um, in the same sense, I would say, moving on to my next narrator, um, is Michael. And Michael, I would say is similar in that he is motivated by duty. He is also, he knew he had a duty in heaven and he knew that duty would be have to, he'd have to keep that duty and carry it out on earth. Um, and he also acts on a sense of great responsibility. But I think what differs between Michael and Gabriel is that, like I was hinting at with Gabriel, he is very empathic and feels kind of everything, not only his own emotions, but emotions uh, around him. So he's acting on a sense of responsibility to essentially, I would say, try and help the whole entire world. While Michael is acting on a sense of responsibility to pretty much overcome the enemy, which in this case is Satan and the fallen. Um, and so Michael is the warrior figure. He is the leader of the heavenly army. He's, um, you know, he's the one who does most of the, the hardcore fighting. I mean, they all do some fighting, but he's the one that, that really is, you know, comes in, saves the day and, uh, takes care of business. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's very, you know, brave, reliable, and he is very observant. He sees kind of all the little, um, kind of all the, everybody's little quirks and, and kind of personalities and characteristics and things like that. Um, and then lastly, our last character point of view is Satan. So um, Satan, I guess the whole reason why I wanted to include Satan was because he's essentially the villain, the antagonist. His narrative is essentially the counter narrative to Jordan. So whatever's happening in kind of Jordan's kind of timeline, so to speak, um, there's the Satan timeline that is kind of, they're moving together, but also intertwining and there's two paths, but they intertwine. So that's essentially Jordan and Satan there because Jordan's the protagonist and Satan's the antagonist. Um, and with Satan, I always knew that I didn't want to portray him as some, you know, monstrous creature like devil. I always knew I wanted him to be that fallen angel. Um, and with that, I knew so essentially he, you know, looks like the angels from heaven. It's just now he's fallen and he's in hell. And I, th Satan's main motivation is essentially, I would say, revenge in a way. He's not happy about his situation. He's not happy about what went down in heaven. And he's pretty much trying whatever he can to not only overthrow the seven archangels on earth, but also kind of take back what was stolen from him. So he thinks. Um, so he's very methodical. He's very persuasive and he's very ambitious and he's also very spiteful. Um, as to be expected from the devil. Um, and so, and something I didn't mention before when I was, um, doing the character pronunciation. So there is a Satan and there is a Lucifer and they are not the same angel. They are two separate angels. 
Um, so Satan is, is the devil. And then Lucifer is just one of his fallen angels that kind of becomes like his second in command. Um, but yeah, so Satan, uh, his point of view in the book, like I said, um, definitely works as, uh, kind of the villain side of the story. You get his origin, but you also get, uh, all the things he's doing, um, opposite the angels. So whatever's happening with the angels, then you see what's happening with him. Um, so now I have a few general character questions that I had gotten ahead of time. Um, that I just wanted to answer real quick before I get to any of the questions in the comments. Um, we could also post the giveaway link again, but I think it's pretty much there in the comments, so we might not have to do that. But so the first question that I had gotten was, why um, did I choose these characters as narr narrators, the four of them? So Jordan, Gabriel, Michael, and Satan. So I've kind of touched on this a little bit, but so Jordan, um, I always, Jordan's my main character, and so his voice is kind of essential because he's the one who keeps the, like the present day timeline on track. Um, I also um, knew he was the, the one that was gonna ground this whole story on earth. So that's pretty much why Jordan is one of the point of view characters. Gabriel, um, I touched on this, but he was the first voice that came to me. So I knew um, all the scenes that I was seeing in my head that I ultimately came to write were through his eyes. So um, a lot of the heaven um, backstory and flashbacks are in his perspective because he's the one, um, this is playing into his em empathic kind of personality. He's the one that you know, like I said, he can't forget about the past. He's the one that remembers everything. And in a way, that it's a really good thing because, I mean, ultimately they have a divine duty and that is supposed to be kind of carried out on earth. So him taking this along with him throughout his time, which spans centuries, is um, a good thing because he's really the one who pulls them all together and makes them remember that we have to defeat evil. Um, and then Michael, I always knew he was going to be a point of view character because the relationship between, um, Michael and Satan is very much a very, um, it's a brotherhood. It's a very, um, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. It's a very, uh, tight knit brotherhood. Um, they, they, at one point Michael even says in the book, and this isn't giving much away, but he actually says that Satan feels like his real brother not just, you know, brother in the sense of, you know, just being connected by some kind of friendship, more brother like a familial blood bond. Um, so because of that, I knew in Michael's point of view, a lot of the, I guess, the, the grudges and also the revenge narrative from Satan would play out. So um, that's why Michael was so essential. Um, and then Satan obviously is essential because he's, you know, the villains, the villain timeline and he's um, showing everything that's happening opposite what the angels are doing, essentially. And I have to say that the Michael Satan scenes in the book are probably the first scenes that came to me. But I always, like I said before, saw this not from, you know, Michael or Satan. I always saw them. There's one scene in particular where they're arguing with each other. And this scene, I saw them arguing with each other. It wasn't like I saw it from one of their eyes. So I knew that it was Gabriel seeing this argument. So that kind of shows you all how I went about choosing the narrators because it's very much how I was able to perceive the story and who, whose eyes I saw certain aspects through and also... Um, kind of the voices who spoke to me the most only because um, they're all so distinctive and um, they all in their own way have kind of their, their challenges, but also their advantages in writing. 
Um, so one other question I had gotten ahead of time was, um, how do I choose character names? So a lot of the angel names, those crazy, not normal, hard to pronounce angel names are actually not made up. I didn't make them up. Um, they are real true angel names. And, um, I actually have an encyclopedia of angels. It's a book. I think I showed it on my last live, but, um, that book has, tons and tons of angels in there. And I think just from that, how I went about choosing them in that book, because there are so many, is um, the seven archangels were listed out as a group um, in different um, cultures and religions. They're interpreted differently. There's different seven, but I picked the seven that I, I picked because um, kind of the core four are Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel. And then the Extra three um, are Chamuel, Joe Field, Zachiel, and I kind of just picked those because really they spoke to me the most. Um, in terms of the other characters, um, kind of the other angels in heaven, and also because this book also contains fallen angel names, so I didn't make those up either. Um, I kind of just was, you know, it's it's just kind of like an act of fate or the universe, you know, you're just flipping through this book and you ultimately land on a page and then you start reading the page and looking at the page and you're like, oh, this angel, this is their name and they do this. And it's like, oh, that would actually be a great character to include in heaven or hell, depending on if it was a fallen angel or not fallen angel. Um, so that's how I came up with the angel names because I, I actually really didn't come up with them. I just found them in the encyclopedia. For As for like um, a lot of my human characters, I did come up with their names. Um, and usually with human characters, I choose their names because of their meaning and significance. Um, and usually that meaning and significance directly has to relate to that character in some way. So this is kind of starting where things starting to give a little away. So I won't get too much into it. But like Jordan's name, the meaning of that name um, is very symbolic and to his character is what I'll say. Um, so who is the easiest character to write? So Jordan is the easiest character to write, um, mainly because he's the one human character, but also because, um, I don't know, I can relate to the way he reacts to certain situations. And I can also to re relate to, um, like if I were thrown into his shoes and had to deal with this angelic adventure, I think his reactions are very similar to the way I would react. Um, I would say the next easiest is probably Gabriel only because he came so early on in my kind of like planning process. Um, so I've just gotten more familiar with his voice. Um, and then hand in hand with that, who is the hardest character to write? Ultimately, the hardest character to write is Satan by far. He is not easy whatsoever. I remember when I first had to start writing his chapters, I could not get his voice. I could not get his tone down. Um, and on top of that, I write them in the first person. So it's like, I go and do this and I go and do that rather than kind of detaching yourself and just saying, you know, Satan goes and does this and Satan goes and does that. That would actually have been a little bit easier. But the fact that you're writing from the eye perspective, you have to be in his head and it's just not easy, you know, like I said earlier, he's very spiteful and he's very set on revenge. So it's definitely like a 360 between him and Jordan and the other angels. Um, and then, I mean, second hardest is, I don't know, maybe Michael. He, he, it took a while for his voice, for me to pin down his voice. Cause when I first wrote the book, I didn't have as many chapters from his perspective. And then when I went back and edited it, um, I added more from his perspective, and I think I just had to get more used to it. Um, now he's fairly easy to write, um, but uh, Satan remains the hardest because even now it's trying to throw yourself back into it. It takes me the longest to finish his chapters, and it also his chapters are the ones that needed to be edited most. Um, okay, so I'm just going to see now if there are any questions in the chat. Um, so I have one, let me see here, hold on, okay, so yeah, I found this new little, new little 
a little uh, software so I can post the questions up on the screen. So, how did you find the inspiration behind the angel and demon characters? Were they hard to develop? So, um, I'm trying to think. So, in a way, I would say yes, they were hard to develop because, like I said, trying to. In my head, I had an idea of what I wanted the angel and demon characters to be, but then ultimately, like I said, trying to find actual angels in that encyclopedia of angels that fit what I had in my head and also, um, you know, just trying to match the vision I had in my head to actual, like, kind of historical fact was definitely um, hard to develop. I think um, it's gotten easier um, as I've gone along because... I've gotten more familiar with kind of the angel lore and and things like that. Um, I would say though, you have to be really, I would say open and to the, your imagination um, and don't kind of really shoot anything down. Cause I get these wild and crazy ideas sometimes and I'm just like, okay, we're gonna put this in the book and then it, or a certain character. And I would, I'm the, what I'm thinking of most is hell because there are a lot of um, extra characters I added in hell that uh, weren't there originally when I wrote it. And coming up with those like side minor demon characters was definitely hard because you know, it's like, okay, what do they do? Why are they important? And um, trying to figure that out, you know, isn't always easy, but it's getting easier as we go on. Um, let's see. I don't know if we have any other questions. Um, I don't think we do. Okay. So, um, I'm going to check on the giveaway. I didn't anticipate this chat being as long as the other one. Um, I just figured I'd jump on and tell you a little bit more about the characters, but um, let's see how the giveaway is doing. If anybody entered. Um. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we have some entries, so I'm gonna go pick a winner. <laughs> okay, yeah, so we have a winner for the giveaway, and it is Lisa Wilkins. Um, so you will be getting um, the uh, a signed paperback and some of the cool book merchandise, which was a tote bag, the pins in the feather bag with the pens, and then um, the passport with the sticker sheet. And I have your email, so I'll just email you and um, we can arrange a, a way to get that sent out to you. Um, so thank you all for tuning in. And um, sorry, I'm just, have you been? Oh, there was one last question. So what have you been doing to promote the book? Um, so I've been doing some uh, blog tours. And so what that is, so they're blog tours that happen on, um, people's blogs, which they, where they post about, um, my book, or I could post like, a like a guest post. Um, and it's all like on a blog. So it's all that part uh, of it is all written. And then there's stuff happening on Instagram. So if you have an Instagram account and you'd like to follow me, it's just at Sarah M. Schaller. It's easy to find me. And what's happening over there though, is there's a kind of a picture component to it. So all the people that sign up to be tour hosts, they actually have to take um, a picture of my book and then they post about it. And then there's a giveaway component attached to it. And um, it's just kind of fun. Um, I had one in July. One's happening right now, actually, on Instagram, and then there'll be another one in September and October. Um, besides the blog tours, I've had some um, people review it. I had one book reviewer. Um, her review came back. I posted that a little um, while ago on uh, my social media. I also have um, a few other book reviewers lined up. They currently are um, reading. And so that's another way I've been promoting it. And then... Um, just this past Monday, I had my um, Publishers Weekly review or my 
Book Life Review. Um, Book Life is the self-published section of Publishers Weekly, and Publishers Weekly is a magazine that is, um, it's a publishing magazine, so it's all the kind of big publishers. They get this magazine and um, all the kind of traditionally published books are featured in here, but also self-published books are featured in here as well. And that review that I got through that magazine was actually posted in um, this Monday's issue. I don't know if you could get a copy of the actual physical print magazine at the bookstore, but um, you should be able to see the review online. I could post that again on my social media. Um, so that's some of the ways uh, we've been promoting it. I'm also looking into doing some advertising, digital advertising. So that will be kind of the next phase. Um, we are getting more questions. Um, is the book available internationally? So yes, the book is available internationally. Um, we've actually had lots of international readers and followers. Um, a lot of people um, actually on Instagram are international readers. Um, and it's available book on Book Depository, so that has um, international shipping there, and my book's up on there. Um, I also believe it's on Amazon in different countries, so like the UK, Canada, and Australia. Um, so it is available internationally. And then um, a few... Okay, so I just want to make sure I addressed all the questions I was getting. But okay, so yes, um, moving forward, you can follow me. Um, if you're not following me on Facebook, you can follow me there. I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm also on Twitter. And I've just recently started a YouTube channel. So you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've been posting all my videos on YouTube. So up there now is my book trailer. And then the first live um, stream I did in July is up, and then I'll post this one up as well. Um, if anybody happened to miss tonight, um, you could refer them to my YouTube page um, because that's where all the videos will be and you could rewatch them. Um, and my YouTube is relatively easy to get to. You should just be able, um, it, there is a link on my website to my YouTube channel, but I also think if you, um, you'll probably Google it because it's just Sarah M. Schaller. You could probably find me pretty easily. Um, and then, so coming up, I will be doing another Facebook Live in September. Um, that will be, we are shooting for September 29th, which is a Tuesday night, but September 29th is All Angels Day, so it'll kind of be a big celebration. But that chat will be all about the symbolism in the book. So if you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned for the details, because I'll be posting that soon. Um, and I also plan to do a pre-filmed video with my editor. Um, she lives in Britain, so it's the time difference between Colorado and Britain is really, really big, so it's hard to do a live with her. So we were hoping to do a pre-filmed video that I'll be able to post. I'm shooting to post that on September 7th, um, but we'll see. Um, the best way to get updates is just to... Uh, Keep, uh, I post everything on social media and on my Facebook page. So um, if you follow that, then you'll see everything. And um, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great Friday night and a great weekend. And I think that is everything. I think we answered all the questions that we had. So thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll see you next time.